A previous video demonstrated that breadth first search returns an optimal action sequence when all you want is the shortest action sequence. In other words, if all actions have the same cost, then breadth first search returns the optimal solution. But what if different actions have different costs? Sometimes individual actions have a cost in terms of time, money, distance, or some other metric. This graph is an abstract representation of a search problem with a single start state and a single goal state. The states are the labeled nodes and the edges represent actions that transition between the connected states. The cost of the actions are the numerical weights that are on the weighted edges. We want to find the path from the start to the goal that minimizes the sum of the costs of all edges traversed. An algorithm that will give us this minimum cost path is uniform cost search. Our search problem will begin at the start state. That means that the start state is what we call on the fringe of the places we're going to search. We haven't actually visited it yet, but because it is on the fringe, it's the only place we can visit, therefore we go there pretty much immediately. So I'll track down here the states that we have officially searched. So we search the start state, and once we have searched the start state, we will put all of the neighboring states onto the fringe. So B is now on the fringe, C is on the fringe, and so is A. Because we've already visited the start state, we will remove it from the fringe, since it is in this visited set down here at the bottom. So now we have three options. Uniform cost search uses a priority queue to decide which member of the fringe it will search next at any time. A priority queue picks the item with the minimum priority. In this case, the priority is the total cost to reach the given node or state from the start. The cost to reach C from the start is 2. The cost to reach A is 5 and the cost to reach B is 3. Therefore, via this route here, we will visit C next with a cost of 2. So we will add C to our list of visited states. Now at this point, C is no longer on the fringe, but if we look at the path to C, from here, the only other state we can visit is A at a cost of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That total cost of 6 is more than the cost of 5 that we can use to get to A from the start. It's also more than the cost of 3 to reach B. Because 3 is the cheapest available option at this point, we're actually going to check B next. So B is added to our list of visited states. It is no longer on the fringe, but a path to it exists that starts at the start and goes straight to B. At this point, we actually get to add D to the fringe because there is a path to D through B with a total cost of 3 plus 10 equals 13. It's a very high cost, therefore we'll look at our other options. We still have this option to go to A for a cost of 6, but ultimately the cheapest option currently available to us is going to A from the start. So we'll go to A from the start for a cost of 5. That allows us to add A to our list of search states. It is no longer on the fringe. And because A has a neighbor we haven't seen yet, namely E, E is now on the fringe. We don't put C on the fringe even though it's a neighbor of A because we've already visited C. So we've currently visited start, C, B, and A, and the fringe consists of E and D. So what are the costs to reach E and D respectively? 
as I already mentioned, the cost to reach D is 10 plus 3, which is 13. The cost to reach E would be 5 plus 3 because the reason that we added E to the fringe was because we were visiting it or imagining visiting it from A. So 8 is less than 13, therefore the next thing we'll do is visit E from A. That adds E to our list of visited states and the cost to reach E was 5, 6, 7, 8. At this point, we can add new points to the fringe. We have F on the fringe. And we haven't visited D yet, so we're technically also considering visiting D via E. And if we do the math, we'll see that going to D from E is going to be 4 plus 3 plus 5. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is less than the 13 that it would take to go through B. However, 5 plus 3 plus 1, which is 9, is even less than that. Therefore, the next stop in our search is to go to F from E. So we will add F to the list of search states. It is no longer on the fringe. And so at this point, the only state on the fringe is D, but we have three options for how to get there. One is to go through B for a cost of 13. One is to go through A and E for a cost of 12. And the final option is to go A, E, F, D for a cost of 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That is indeed the cheapest, so we will pick that route. So we go to D, we add D to our list of searched states, and we remove it from the fringe. The only neighbor of D we have not searched yet is the goal itself, so the goal is on the fringe. Since there's only one state left on the fringe, that's the next one we'll visit. So we go to the goal from D. And at this point, we have visited all of the states. And in particular, we visited the goal. We don't necessarily have to visit all the states. We stop as soon as we reach the goal. Or, in a problem with multiple goal states, which is possible, we stop once we reach any of the goals. So the states we visited in order were start, C, B, A, E, F, D, and then the goal. However, the actual optimal path that we found was start, A, E, F, D, goal. So there is a difference between the states we visit and the final optimal path. The final optimal path is only the direct route from the start to the goal. We don't factor in any sort of backtracking because all of this search happens in a sort of planning stage. We're looking at the problem, planning what our actions will be, and then when an agent actually attempts to solve the problem, the agent will only do the actions that are along the optimal path. All of these other things that were considered were just speculation and are not actually performed by the agent. So what that means is that the cost of the path that was found only includes the edges that are in part of this optimal path. We don't include the cost of checking these possible options that ended up not working out. So the actual cost of the path we traversed is 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 2 plus 5. So the total cost of the optimal path is 16. And that is how uniform cost search works. This can be applied to any problem with costs. 
Um, but although it will always return an optimal path, the time it takes to execute is not always very short. It can take quite a long time to exhaustively check all of the shorter options first. We need a better way to search problems like this.